Who's in my ear? Did you see my ear? Out of my way! Here I come! Here I come! Oh. Mick. Yeah. Have you heard about Israel's girl bosses and the tent peg? No. No? Well, good Tell news. Me. It's in scripture yet again. Mm -hmm. We're in Judges 4 today, people. So grab your Bibles and read along. Okay, first one. After Ehud's death, okay, if you don't know who Ehud is, the previous video um, explains all that. It's an amazing story, um, as is this one. Mm. But after he died, Israelites again did evil in the Lord's sight. Okay, you're going to hear that a lot. Okay, okay. And we'll come back to that. So the Lord turned them over to King Yabin of Hazor, a Canaanite king this time. He wasn't, he's not fat, as far as we're aware. Okay. The commander of his army was Sisera. He's the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Sisera, our antagonist. Who lives in Harasheth Hagayim. Sisera had 900 iron chariots, and he ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. Long time. Yep. Again, a whole person's young, one person's life. Mm. Okay? But the people of Israel cried out to the Lord for help. I mean, as, as you would? Yes. Yeah, why'd they wait 20 years? I don't know. Okay. We don't know. Yeah. Um, well, if you know, comment below. <clears throat> Deborah, the wife of Lipidoth, was a prophet who was judging Israel at the time. She would sit under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites would go to her for judgment. One day she sent for Barak, son of Abinoam, who lived in Kadesh, the land of Naphtali, and she said to him, This is what the Lord of God, Israel, commands you. All right, Barak is sort of one of the good guys, but not the protagonist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's the commander of the army. Yeah. This is what the God of Israel commands you. Call out. How many warriors? 10,000? Exactly, 10,000. Wow. wow. It's almost as if you've read this before, Michael. Almost. The tribes of Natali, Zebulun, and Mount Tabor. And I will call out Sisera, bad guy, commander of Yavin's army, along with his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. There I will give you victory over him. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. This is what's happening. Then Barak said, I will go only if you go with me. I don't want to be alone. Okay. I mean, wanted some assurance. Okay. Can understand. But there's a catch. Okay. Because she says, Yes, I will. Very well. I'll go with you, but you will receive now honor. Okay. For the Lord's victory will be at the hands of a woman. Hmm. Okay, considering women weren't warriors at the time, that's quite a big statement to make. Yeah. But, yeah. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. At Kadesh, Bar Barak called together the tribes of Zebulun and Naphtali, and 10,000 warriors went up with them, as did Deborah. Now, Heber the Kenite, descendant of Moses' brother-in-law, Habab, had moved away from the other members of his tribe and pitched his tent by the oak of Zananim near Kadesh. All right, mm. this seems like an off, like who the heck is this guy? Yeah, it's, it's quite a tangent in the story. Yes, okay, we will come back to this. But remember, okay. Hebe the Canaanite, and he pitched his tents near Kadesh. Okay. Remember those, we'll come back to them. We'll okay. All right, back to Sisera. He was told that Barak is coming up to fight him, <laughs> okay? So he calls his 900 chariots and all his warriors, and they march, Harasheth Hagiam, I love saying that, mm -hmm. to Kid the Kishon River. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so then Deborah's son said to Barak, Go get him, tiger. This is the day the Lord will give you victory over Sisera. The Lord is marching ahead. Great, that's good news. And then, so Barak led his 10,000 warriors down the slopes and up into battle. And Barak attacked the Lord through Sisera and all his chariots and warriors into panic. And Sisera leaked down from his chariot and escaped. Ran away. I mean, if you're losing, it's probably wise the way it is. It is the best going to kill you. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then Barak finished off all of Sisera's army. None of them was left alive. Yeah, wow. Whoa, dude. All right. Now Sisera ran to the tent of Jael, 
the wife of Heber the Kenite. Ah, I see. So he's the guy, mm -hmm. the tent of Moses, who's pitched his tent near Kadesh. Yeah, wow. Okay, so that's why that's a jail is his wife. And mm -hmm. Sisera comes up to her, and this is what JL says. She's like, she said, I'll give you shelter from the storm. Come into my tent, sir. Do not be afraid. So he went into her tent, mm -hmm. and she covered him. Like it. Wow. Very hospitable. Seems it, yeah. And then he asked, hey, can you please give me some water? I'm thirsty. And she's like, have some milk. Lovely woman. Great service. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so after this, he says, hey, can you just stand at the door and if anybody comes to look at me, just tell them I'm not here. You didn't see anything. Right? So Sister then fell asleep from exhaustion because he'd run away, he'd fought, he'd had some milk, and he was ready for sleep. But then <laughs> JL quietly crept up to him with a hammer and a tent peg. And this is not some like small tent peg you'd find from Anaconda or something. This mm. is like a big tent peg. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. for those massive tents. Go, go. Oh, oh, oh. Straight through Cicero's temple and in to the ground. Whoa, whoa. Not, not so, so hospitable after all. He died. Not hospitable at all. Ooh, she's maxed out the deception trait. Mm-hmm. Very mm. much so. So Barak came looking for Cicero, and Jael's like, ta-da! So on that day, Israel saw mm. God defeat Yavin, and from that time on, Israel became stronger and stronger until Yavin was finally defeated. Mm. All right, and then the next chapter, chapter five, is this called the Song of Deborah in my Bible. And it is about a song the Israelites sang in commemoration of this victory and how Deborah and Jael get all the credit. Barak doesn't really get any. Mm. And at the very end, it says there was peace in the land for 40 years after mm -hmm. this. So Israelites were oppressed for 20, relieved for 40. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, it's nice. Yeah, not a bad thing. Okay. Now, yeah. any questions, Mick? Um, so... I, it's a it's it's a good story and all. Why do, why is God wanting me to listen to it? Okay. Well, that could take there's many many lessons to be learned from here. But okay. we're going to go again, similar to Ehud. There is a pattern emerging here of Israelite the Israelites mucking up, sinning, getting oppressed because God's like, fine, do your own thing. Mm. And they cry to the Lord because life sucks for them. And then yep. God sends a redeemer, a rescuer. Okay. Oh, I see. But again, okay. it's only they only for a certain amount of time, and they keep keep going and going and going. Like again. going back to their own ways, yes. and then. Oh, so I even see. the next story we do, it's going to be the, it's very similar. Mm. Okay. In trouble, so it's, rescue. Yeah, okay. Trouble, so it's, rescue. It's this pattern that keeps re repeating. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. And it all will lead to someone. Who does it lead to? We're well, going to have to keep tuning in to find out. Okay.